Welcome back to Low Stress Math with Mrs. Bono. We are in book three, chapter six, transformations, and lesson two, translations. So I put a little picture here to give you a hint that this is about slides. And we're gonna look at, the, look at which one's moving. There's no little prime next to A, B, or C, but there are primes here. So we are slide to the left, slide down, Crisscross. No, no, no. That's the wrong song. Okay. So I want you to stop a second and look at those two and tell me some similarities and some differences. Go ahead. Pause the video right away. Do the warm up. Okay. I hope you paused. I hope you did the warm up. Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, not my best voice today. So let's look at some similarities. A, B, C. A prime, B prime, C prime. The points are in the same order. That means that it did not change orientation. If the points are in the same order, it didn't change orientation. Now let's look. This is one, two, three boxes high. One, two, three boxes high. One, two, three boxes wide. One, two, three boxes wide. And this is one, two, three diagonals for the hypotenuse. One, two, three. Di These are both exactly the same size. So they are the same size triangles. And the angles are the same. This is a right angle, this is a right angle, and they're the same size. So if you were doing a proof, which comes later on, it's side, angle, side. Whereas one side, one angle, and one side are the same, that means that the hypotenuse also has to be the same because these are the right triangles. How do I know they're right triangles? Because these boxes are squares, and a square fits exactly into A, so the same size, same shape. Do you remember what word we used for same size and same shape? Yeah, congruent. And that's a symbol too, that little tilde for same size, sorry, same shape, and a little equal sign for same size. So these two triangles are congruent. Now what about some differences? Well, they're in different locations. What else is different? <laughs> you know what, honestly, I think that's the only difference is the location. So let's slide up and look down here. A translation moves every point of a figure or shape the same distance in the same direction. I'm gonna slide back up and look at this. I was joking before, but it did slide to the left and then down. And every single point slid the same distance and in the same direction. A translation can move blank or blank and blank or blank. What? Oh, they're also called slides. And then I'll come back because I can't remember what I wrote there. Oh, come on, Bono, get your brain back. All right, a translation can move. Oh, I know. Right or left, up and down. See? My poor brain. And it doesn't have to move in two directions. It can move only to the right, or it can move only to the left, or it can move only up, or it can move only down. Or it can do a combination of, say, right and up, right and down, left and up, left and down. But it doesn't have to do everything. All right, the symbol for a translation is a capital T. And then down on the bottom, it tells you how far did the X move? X plus A. And how far did the Y move? Y plus B. 
and usually it's just T, A, B, where A tells you how far right or left, B tells you how far up or down. Orientation, that's the direction that the shape points in. And the orientation does not change in the, the orientation does not change with a transformation. So it's always X plus A and Y plus B. You add or subtract from the coordinates. Okay, so let's go back up here and see how far we went. Now this first coordinate is at 3, 3. Right? And then it moved all the way over here to put your glasses on, old woman, negative five, negative three. Now there's two ways you could do it and figure out what A and B are, but I'm just gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it was three minus eight, and then down, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three minus six. And look at that, that does give me, three minus eight is negative five, three minus six is negative three, so that works. Now, all I'm gonna do is change this to x and y. So the three is the x, and minus eight, and three is the y, and minus six. So that's giving me a transformation of negative eight comma negative six because I moved eight to the left and then six down. And if I wanted to do that to B, which is at three, six, three minus eight is negative five. Look, it's right at negative five. And then six minus six is zero and look, B is at zero. So I could take any of the coordinates on A prime, B prime, C prime and A, B, C and figure this out but we'll do this more later. Let's come to this side. Okay, in example one and two below, translate the figure as described, then answer the questions to look for patterns in the ordered pairs. Ooh, we gotta do this, it's gonna be good. Okay, translate triangle ABC, five units left and two units down. So let's do the A first. One, two, three, four, five units left, one, two units down. There's my new point. Now it's A that moved, so I'm gonna call this new point A prime. Now let's do B. One, two, three, four, five units left, one, two units down. That's gonna be my B prime. Five units left, one, two, three, four, five, two units down, here is C prime. Look how close those are together, that's okay. They could be close together. They could be friends. I, I can't find my good ruler, so I'm just gonna use this silly old beat up wood one. I'm gonna play connect the dots. Here we go. And, yeah, I really wish I had my normal ruler, but. Come on, let's, why is this not working? There we go. And whenever you do these and it's a shape, you really should use a ruler. And I'm saying that because you wanna get points. And if it looks nice and neat, you get more points. Now, well, what's happening? Record the vertices of the pre-image and the image. Okay, so pre-image A is at two, four. And image A prime is at negative three, two. Now, pre-image B is at six, seven. And B prime is at one, five. And C is at seven, three. 
and C prime is at 2, 1. Describe how the transformation affected the x and y values. Well, to get from 2 to negative 3, you would have to do, you know, 2 minus 5 gets you to negative 3. So the x value is minus 5, which is what 5 units left means. 2 units down, the y value is going to be minus 2 because I'm going down. It's negative. How could you summarize the effects of the transformation algebraically? Oh, I guess I already did algebraically, but that's okay. That's how my mind goes. So it would be t and then x minus 5 comma y minus 2, and that's just t negative 5 negative 2. That's how it would look if you did it as a symbol. All right, we'll get back to this. Translate DEF four units right and three units up. Okay, let's do D first. Four units right. One, two, three, four, and three units up. One, two, three. And that's going to be D prime. Four units left. One, two, three, four, and three units up. One, two, three. That's my F prime and E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. There it is, way up there for E prime. I probably should have done them in order, huh? D, E, F or something like that? I don't know. I'm losing it. Oh, looking for the ruler, and it's right in front of me, as always. Very clever, Bono. Very clever. Go. Come on, you're a good computer. There we go. A little bit off. Yeah. Because I'm using a ruler I'm not used to. There we go. This E was at, where was E at? I should do these in order. I keep saying that. Get it together, Bono. It should be D, E, F. And that would be to D prime, E prime, F prime. I'm trying not to do things out of order. Here we go. Negative seven, negative four. And it goes to negative three, negative one. And let's see, E is at negative four, positive one. And it goes to image E prime at zero, four. And F is at negative three, negative five. And it goes to F prime, which is at positive one, negative two. Describe how the transformation affects the X and Y values for each vertex. All right, so negative seven plus five plus five, plus four. I can add, honestly, I swear I can. Negative seven plus four is negative three. That's how I got from here to here. Negative four plus four is zero. That's how I got from negative four to zero. And negative three plus four is one. And that's how I get from negative three to one, okay? So all of these were plus four. And then, let's do wise. Negative four plus three is negative one. Negative four to negative one. Negative four plus three is four. Wait, negative, wait. Really, Bono? Learn to add. One plus three. I'm looking up here and getting answers to, one plus three is four. And negative five, plus three is negative two. And how would I write that algebraically? Well, the first one, x plus four, x plus four, x plus four. And then y plus three, y plus three, y plus three. Now I would write it with symbolically just the four comma three, because I know I'm adding, they're both positive. All right, let's take a look on the next page. 
my goodness gracious, it says practice. You know what that means. It means pause the video and do the problem. You've got this. All right, I hope you came back. I hope you tried it on your own because, come on, say it with me. The only way to learn math is to do math. Graph the rectangle cars with the following ordered pairs. And we have negative five, positive five, negative three, positive five, negative three, positive one, and negative five, positive one. So that's a rectangle. And I am heating on my ruler today, so I'm just gonna... I know it's not as neat, I know, but uh, whatever. All right, now I'm going to go three units to the right and five units down. So, C, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Right there is my C. One, two, three units to the right. One, two, three, four, five units down. Now there's two boxes between C and A, and there's two boxes between C prime and A prime, so I'm doing okay. S, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. S, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, R. C, A, R, S. And to make sure I'm right, I'm counting the boxes between. So there's two boxes between C and A and two boxes between C prime and A prime. One, two, three, four boxes between C and C prime and S prime. One, two, three, four, two boxes between A prime and R prime. Oh, look, going back and checking made me realize I hadn't put my prime, so I had to fix that, right? but it's the same distance, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, it's the same. So I know that those two shapes are congruent, which means I did my transformation correct. All right, C prime is at negative two, zero. A prime is at zero, zero. R prime is at zero, negative four. And S prime is at negative two, negative four. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Graph the trapezoid. Oh, trapezoid, what shape is that? Well, we'll find out in a minute, make sure we did it right. I do know what a trapezoid is. I was just teasing. Okay, positive two, positive four for M, positive four, positive four for A, positive five, positive two for T, positive one, positive two for H. Oh, look, our little math made a trapezoid. Trapezoid have one pair of parallel lines and another pair that's not parallel lines. Translate math, six units left and three units down. I'm gonna change colors. So, starting with the M. One, two, three, four, five, six units left for M prime. Oh, no, that's not M prime. I didn't go three units down. I'm gonna get fired. Three units down. One, two, three. There's my M. Prime bono. Six units left. One, two, three, four, five, six units left. One, two, three down. A prime. Six units left. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three down. H. Oh, prime. And one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three down for T prime. Okay. There's two between M and A. There's two between. This is a two one diagonal. This is a two one diagonal. What I mean by two is two down, one over. Two down, one over. And this is two, four, two, four. So these two shapes are congruent, they're the same size which means that I did the transformation correctly. Um, it didn't say, wait, how would you represent the above translation using, oh, how would I do this using our rule? Well, it was 
the x minus 6 because I went to the left and then the y minus 3 because I went down. So that's how I would write that as the algebra. Now using the symbols, remember it's a capital T for translation and I went 6 to the left and 3 down. That's the, that's the symbol. Okay, let's try the next page. <gasps> checkpoint. Well, checkpoint means you're doing this too. Let's go. Pause the video, try the problem. Write a verbal description of the translation. Well, which one do I start with? I start with the one without primes. Which way do I go to the one with prime? Well, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. Then seven left, one, two, three, four up. Now I'm gonna check it with a different point. I'm gonna take the G, uh, you know what, take the J. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven left, one, two, three, four up. That's a verbal description. All right, represent it using algebraic expression. So X minus seven, because it's going left, and then y plus four, because it's going up. What do you notice about the line segments and angle measures in the pre-image and the image? Well, let's look at the line segments. Between G and J and H and I, three blocks. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, there we go. The line segments are congruent. Now I'm gonna add a word that I haven't used before, corresponding. What do I mean by corresponding? I mean it's in the same place, but it, it's in the same place in the figure, but a different figure. What does that mean, Bono? So like take HI, hi. It's at the top of the figure. H prime, I prime, also at the top of the figure. Those are in the same place, but in two different shapes. This HI, corresponds to H prime, I prime. So the corresponding sides, this one and this one, this one and this one, and the sides are congruent. The corresponding sides are congruent. We're gonna be using that word a lot. Now look at the angles. All the angles are right angles. They're all in the corners. So the corresponding angles, G and G prime corresponding, J and J prime corresponding. The corresponding angles are congruent. And with that corresponding and congruent. Corresponding and congruent. Corresponding sides are congruent and corresponding angles are congruent. So the coordinates for triangle KLM are given in the table. Eric plans to translate it nine units to the right and nine units down. So we're gonna add nine and then subtract nine. Describe the process you would use to determine the coordinates. Well, since I don't have a piece of graph paper, I am going to add nine units to the X and subtract nine units to the Y. So I'm going to add to the x, record the coordinates. OK, so I'm going to take the original coordinates, k, l, and m, 
and k was negative 7, 2, and l is negative 2, 2, and m is negative 2, 7, and now I'm going to add 9 to the x, so negative 7 plus 9, and then subtract 2 minus 9. So I added 9 to the x value and subtracted 9 from the y value to get my new point, k prime at negative 7 plus 9 is 2, 2 minus 9 is negative 7. So my new, Im my new image is at 2, negative 7 for k. Now I'm going to do that for this one. Negative 2 plus 9 and then positive 2 minus 9. And I get my new image, L prime, at negative 2 plus 9 is 7. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. Okay, and this last one, negative 2 plus 9 and 7 minus 9. And I get my new image, M at negative 2 plus 9 is 7, 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So I got to come up here and write my L prime, 7, negative 7, and my M prime at 7, negative 2. Okay, that was a lot. Um, I wrote the plus 9 and the minus 9 in red. You might want to do that as well. And I believe that that's the end of the lesson. Yes, it is. Okay. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.